Physics students, welcome to uh, to the third and final video in subtopic 11.3 capacitance. And in, in my last video, I talked about um, how capacitors store energy, um, and we've also talked about the effect of dielectrics and what a capacitor is. In my last video, I also talked quite a bit about um, about how capacitors charge and about how the the time rate of charging is is very important to know that and to be able to control that in terms of um, the application of using capacitors inside of circuits. Okay. Equally important is the uh, is the act of discharging. Okay, um, and just to make it very clear, in the IB again, um, you only need to qualitatively be able to describe charging uh, in terms of recognizing those graphs. But for discharging, you need to understand the mathematics behind it and be able to quantitatively, in addition to qualitatively describe and model uh, the discharging of capacitors. Okay, so let's so let's get to work here. Okay. The difference between charging um, and discharging in terms of this circuit. Remember, in my um, conversation with you about charging, we had that this circuit, let me get my pen here, this circuit uh, was connected at A, okay? And when it was connected to A, we said that the capacitor charged, right, according to because it had this potential difference going across it. Now, we flip the switch from A to B. So there's no um, external potential difference which is, which is being applied. And what happens is this capacitor will spontaneously discharge. It will lose its charge. It will lose its potential difference. Uh, the capacitor, of course, doesn't uh, stays the same because the capacitance, remember, is just a, a function of the physical property of the device. Okay, but V will eventually go from the maximum voltage, which was six volts because of that of that uh, EMF of the battery, from six volts to zero volts. And the way that it does is it's an exponential decay. Okay, and V naught here is the initial voltage, which is the battery EMF. Okay, all right. Now Q will eventually go from 12. Remember, we saw 12 before was the was that maximum uh, charge that the plates would um, acquire? Eventually goes from 12 to 0 microcoulombs, where in this case, Q0 is, uh, would be C times the EMF of the battery, which, is, uh, which would be the capacitance, which is 2 microfarads times 6 volts, okay? Whatever that is, I guess that gives you 12, right? Okay? So that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens with to V of T and Q of T, okay, for a discharging capacitor. Notice that the only difference between them is that when charging, we had this term 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. Now it's just E to the negative T over tau, okay? Now the current will eventually go from an initial peak to 0 amps, okay? So that will be also, that will be an exponential decay. And that's given by I of T equals I naught E to the negative T over tau. Now what is that peak? In order to get that peak, what we have to do is we is we're going to differentiate this function for Q of T, right? Because delta Q over delta T is the current. I take the derivative of that. I end up that um, that that equals negative Q naught over tau. So mm -hmm. I naught, the um, original or that 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 peak current, is going to be negative Q naught over tau. Interestingly, okay. And I want to also point out that I naught is also negative. V over R, as would be expected from Ohm's law, okay? Now, this negative sign um, is actually important, and you read in some textbooks where you can essentially ignore the negative sign. We're going to kind of halfway ignore it, and I'll show you what I mean a little bit later, okay? All right, so I put it all together. Charging, it's the same circuit, okay? All right? <clears throat> if it's charging, the graph of V of T against T is going to look like this, okay? The graph of Q of T against T is going to look like this, okay? With the following values for V naught and Q naught, okay? And the graph of I against T is going to look like this. Now, what I've done is I've labeled on here, um, I've put this RC, okay, tau, I've labeled the time constant on here, okay? So the time constant here, we remember we, we figured that out as 0.002. Okay, and also we showed that that an ohm times a farad equals the units of seconds, which is time, of course. So that that all worked out. You often see these kinds of graphs not with time, but with multiples of tau, multiples of RC. So RC, this would be two RC, three RC, four RC, etc., 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 just to keep you um, up to date in terms of what you might see. Now putting it all together, right? We have for a charging a charging um, Capacitor, we have that Q goes like this, right? I goes like that, okay? So it's all very, very straightforward.
uh, straightforward stuff as uh, according to our last um, to our last video. And re and remember, only qualitative knowledge is needed. Okay, for charging. Okay, now discharging. Um, on this particular slide, I'm going to actually show you the IB equations that you're given in the data booklet, okay? So they give you that tau equals RC, okay? All right? Discharging, we have an ex exponential decrease. Again, I've labeled RC here. V equals V naught e to the negative T over tau, um, where V naught is equal to the EMF of the battery that charged the capacitor in the first place. Q of T against T is this. Q equals Q naught e to the negative T over tau. That's what you're given. Um, these are not given to you. These initial values for Q0 and V0, I believe, are not given to you in your data booklet, okay? The Q0 is just C times the, the voltage, uh, the pot potential difference of the battery, okay? Now, remember how I told you that uh, a lot of times we ignore that negative sign for the current, okay? Really, the I of T for a discharging capacitor um, is this graph. Uh, that goes that exponentially goes to zero from a negative value, okay? And that's because that I naught is negative uh, V over R. However, the IB data booklet just gives you I equals I naught e to the negative T over tau, okay? All right, and I'll explain this uh, a little bit more in the next slide, okay? So again, for discharging, qualitative and quantitative knowledge are both needed, okay? So a little bit more about current, okay? All right, so... <coughs> The IB is okay with you having your graph like this, okay, where I naught is V over R or epsilon over R. Really what it is is this, and really the only difference, it's very common to ignore the negative sign. Um, the only difference is the negative sign. It still is delivering the same amount of energy, the same amount of power, right? Um, but the, the point is that it's, it, it only signifies a current direction reversal. And in fact, that being the case, of course, the potential difference also reverses, and Q also also alternates polarity, right? Now, in the, that's really going beyond the scope of what you guys need to know for the IB in terms of um, capacitance and capacitors, okay? So generally, you'll see these kinds of graphs for I against T for a discharging capacitor where we do, in fact, ignore the negative sign, and that's okay. All right, so just be aware that you'll see, uh, if you look at other sources or other textbooks, you'll see um, negative, um, negative functions that come up asymptotically towards the x-axis. It's very common to see that. Okay, so a little note about um, exponentials and half-lives. And we are, we're actually going to study this when we talk about uh, radioactive decay. It's the same idea, okay? Um, remember, uh, in the last video, we said that when t equals tau, which is the product of R and C. That's the time required for V and Q to reach exactly 63% of their maximum. And the reason was because we had this equation 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. Okay, If we set T equals tau, uh, then this exponential becomes negative 1, and the whole thing shakes out to be 0.63. Remember that this quantity right here was what we multiplied for V of T. We multiplied V naught by that quantity, and for Q of T, Q naught by that quantity. Okay. All right, and that was the time required to reach 63%, or in other words, it lost 0.37 or, or 37%. Now, if we consider the time required for V of T and Q of T to reach 50% of their maximum, exactly half, what we would do is we'd set this quantity equal to 0.5, okay? And there's a little bit of math that we have to consider here, and I hope that you guys are okay with your natural logs, okay? All right, so... What I do is I subtract 1 from both sides, and I get that negative e to the negative t over tau is negative 1 half, okay? Now, uh, I get rid of that 1 half by multiplying or dividing by negative 1, okay? And I notice that if I inverse both sides, remember, this is really 1 over e to the e to the t over tau. If I flip inverse both sides, I get that e to the t over tau is 2. I take the natural log of both sides, so I end up that it ends up that t over tau is ln of 2. So if I solve for tau, tau is t over ln 2, and this is a very important um, infor important thing here. Uh, T, I, I've actually indicated T as T one half because it's it's that half life of the capacitor. So in other words, tau or the time constant is the time needed for the quant for the quantity to decrease by half its initial value divided by uh, ln of two. Okay, so that's something that you should be aware of. Okay, here's another example. I'd like for you guys to to pause the video and try this one. Okay, so I have a charged capacitor discharging through a resistor, so it's an RC circuit. After five seconds, the voltage across the capacitor plates drops to 10% of the initial voltage. 
Okay, what's the time constant of the circuit? Any, any idea how you would solve this? Okay. Well, you know that V of T is V naught E to the negative T over tau. Okay. Um, what you want is for V to be 0 0.10 of V naught. Okay. Okay, because that's 10%. So we have 0 0.10 equals E to the negative T over tau. I take uh, log logarithms of both sides. That's the only way that I can extract that time constant tau. And I get that tau is 2.17 seconds. Remember, tau is the um, uh, gives us an idea of how quickly a capacitor charges or discharges. All right. How about the time after which the voltage is reduced to 5% of its initial value? Now, here you have to be careful in terms of interpreting uh, the question. And the way the English words are phrased is very, very important here. Okay, So now V equals 0 0.05 V naught. You would not use 0.95, right? I've seen students make that mistake. Okay, Do the same thing here. And now you're solving for T. The only way to get T out of that is to take the natural log of both sides. And I get that T is 6.5 seconds. So after 6.5 seconds, the voltage is reduced to 5% of its initial value. Okay, And that's how we do it. All right. Okay, I need to say a little bit to you about capacitors and this idea of diode bridge rectification. Now, to jog your memory, remember we said that we could have um, we could have like a we could have a full wave rectification by using a diode bridge, where we would take an initial alternating current um, signal, and what we could do is we could make it all positive, right? Okay. Now it turns out that we can use capacitors to help smooth this part of the signal right here so that we don't have as much of a drop in the current and the other quantities um, Q and V as we did before. Okay, And the way we do that is we connect the um, capacitor in parallel with the load which in this case is, is shown by a resistor like this. Okay, So at the first quarter of a cycle the capacitor charges fully to V max. Okay? Over the next one quarter cycle the capacitor will then discharge so the current through the load goes from top to bottom in this diagram. And then this process repeats for the next two one quarter cycles. The bottom line is, and this is you're going to need to be able to describe this qualitatively, okay? The output voltage ends up dropping less steeply, or the graph tends to be smoothed out. Okay? So here, see how this is lined up? When this um, when the input when the uh, when the I of T against T is going down like this, is when the current from the discharging capacitor or the capacitor will actually add to that, um, discharge that energy such that we don't lose as much. It doesn't go all the way down to zero, okay? So you get a waveform that is a curve, straight line, curve, straight line, and so forth. So in that way, the capacitor um, helps, that helps to smooth out that, um, that um, signal, which is very, very useful, okay? Okay, last example. This is the kind of question you'll be asked on the IB, okay? Um, the figure shows an AC voltage that has been smoothed by a diode bridge circuit, okay? And obviously, it's been smoothed because it doesn't go down to zero. That's how you'll know qualitatively when you see a graph, all right? Use the graph to answer these questions. A, determine the frequency of the AC voltage. Well, that's easy, right? Okay? The period is 20 milliseconds. The frequency would then be 50 hertz. And I want you to also notice from this graph that the maximum potential difference um, the, the maximum voltage of the circuit is uh, 4 volts, okay? Now, the capacitance of the capacitor in the bridge has a value of 12 microfarads. Determine the change in the charge in the capacitor plates during one discharge of the capacitor, okay? To do that, we have to figure out the change in the potential difference. Remember, they're asking the change in the charge of the capacitor plates, okay? And that's going to be Vmax minus Vmin. We know that Vmax is 4. For Vmin, all you do, you simply just read the minimum, the local minimum of this of this function, which is 3.4, and it's 0.6 volts. Okay. Now, once we know that, we would say that delta Q equals C delta V from our old capacitance equation, and we get that the change in charge would be 7.2 microcoulombs. Okay. Pretty clever, huh? And finally, for part C, estimate the average current during a discharge and the resistance of the resistor in the RC diode bridge circuit. Okay, So from the graph, you can see that the discharge lasts for about 7 milliseconds. Okay, So it's, from, it's going from 4 volts to 3.4 volts. How long does that last? It's about 7 milliseconds. Okay, All right, so I would be delta Q over delta T. We'd use the same delta Q that we used from before, delta T, um, 1.0 milliamps. Okay, Now, <coughs> The average, um, the average voltage 
is 3.7, right? Because 3.4 to 4.0. So therefore, R is V over I, which is 3.7 volts, all over um, all over the average the average current, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. I just found here, and I get that the resistor is 3.7 mega ohms.